Hi, today we want to get into the amazing world of a hair dryer. And you can harvest a few components from the hair dryer, like the heating element, which is a bunch of resistive wires. This one I've used before in my seat warmer video. Also a bunch of switches, a DC motor, a full bridge rectifier, a power cord, uh, a fuse and a thermal breaker. Let's heat it up. Oh, it popped open. So it opens the circuit when the temperature rises above some threshold. It's pretty much like a fixed thermostat. And we can do a world of projects with these and learn, which is mostly for me to do and for you to only watch. If you kids want to do educational projects you can actually do, then head on to my sponsor Kiriko. They provide a ton of different fun project crates in Steam for different age groups. And using my link kiriko.com slash electroboom, you can get 50% off your first month of any crate. But my projects are educational projects done by a certified professional failure prone dumbass excuse for a human being such as myself. So let's make things. You can unwind the heater element and use it for multiple different purposes. First, let's make a foam cutter out of it. You cut like 20 cm of wire and straighten it. Then you need one of these plastic clamps you can find in your dad's toolbox. For some reason, these have holes at the end of the handle. You pass the wire through it and twist it. Then open the clamp a little bit, pass the wire through the hole and twist it again. Now, if you let go of the clamp, its spring will keep the wire stretched. Now we can just tie the power cord across the element and plug it in. It blew like a fuse. You can make a fuse out of these wires. Okay, let's not lose focus. First I'll make a foam cutter, then I'll make a fuse. This wire is around 250 milliohms per inch, so over 4 inches and 120 volts it would draw. 120 amps? I just need it to be warm enough to cut a foam. I just connect it to a 10 volt supply and raise the voltage if needed. There you go. Ow, I just connect this to a 0 volt supply and raise the voltage as needed. 1 volt. A bit sticky. 2 volts. Start to smoke. Oh, it is cutting. A little bit more maybe. <laughs> 3 volts. Mm -hmm. Nice! So, two AA batteries. I just needed two AA batteries. Just make sure you use rechargeable batteries because running three to four amps through them will discharge them in more than half an hour, not too bad. Then you'll need to recharge them. Well, I don't have a proper battery holder, but I have some neomedium Neodymium. magnets that can hold my batteries and wires together. Ready to go. Will it cut? Ha! <laughs> Let me see if I can cut a duck out of it. <laughs> My hands are too wobbly for a beautiful artwork. Let's retry. Okay, a little bit better. <laughs> This cuts well, and it's safe too, something you can do at home. Okay, let's make a fuse. A fuse is basically a piece of wire that gets hot and melts open when too much current runs through it. Let's see at what current it melts. 5 amps maybe? Yeah, no, it glows a bit, but no burn. 7 amps perhaps? Still no, and I don't think real fuses glow like that. How about 10 amps? The now, so I guess it could be a 10 amp fuse. I keep engraving myself with hot wires. Guess we could make an engraver out of it. Okay, okay. So we need to hold the wire somehow with some fire resistance material. A piece of stick maybe? I tie some copper wire to the end of this wire, like this. Tape it to the end of the stick. And we have our engraver. Now we just connect it up and engrave. Quick, I need a piece of wood. Oh sh! Mm, wood is not fire resistant. I'm thinking we could use 
some terminal blocks to hold the wires. The good thing about terminal blocks is that they have this big chunk of metal in them so it acts like a big thermal mass and it will get warmer much slower than the wire itself. We could take it out of the plastic too if it melts later. Tie the element and wires to the terminal block. Now we can tape it to the stick because the copper wires won't get warm anymore. And now we have a safer engraver. And now we can engrave. Let's start from 6 amps. Do, 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 do. There you go. <laughs> it engraves nicely, but maybe 6 amps is a little bit too much. How about 5 amps? Yeah, 5 amp is nice too, but the tip of this thing is a little bit too wide. We should make it sharper. There you go, much sharper. Turn it on. <coughs> Beautiful, in it. <laughs> Too much smoke, though. I know we can use the fan we harvested from the hair dryer to suck. Remove the smoke. I just forgot to figure out how it was connected before I cut everything off. There you go, this guy has the schematic. So the 120 volt line goes through the full bridge rectifier first before feeding the motor, because it's a DC motor. Fortunately for us, the rectifier is already connected to the motor. We just tie the power wires to it. And now it's ready to- ah! My diodes! Let me just directly connect it to my DC power supply and check something. 9 volts and all it needs is like 15 volts if you don't know how something works don't put false information on the web if I'm not wrong the DC motor was driven through one of the heating elements so a big portion of the voltage would drop over the element and a small portion of it was driving the motor which makes me think we can make some good power resistors from these. For now, we just tape the fan into some pipe that we can vent it out of somewhere. It doesn't quite fit, but it doesn't matter. See, due to some fluid dynamic effect, the smoke isn't just sucked into the fan, it is also sucked from the sides of it into the pipe. So now we can engrave in peace, except that we need two power supplies or a single supply with two outputs. The good thing about having supplies is that you can tune the airflow or the temperature of the engraver. Let's make a resistor. Why should you pay a ton of money to buy a power resistor when you can run 5 amp through this wire no problem? You can cut a 1 ohm length of it for 25 watts or 10 ohms for 250 watts. Here's a 10 ohm 250 watt resistor that can take 5 amps like a champ, see? Ouch! Well, evidently there are two different types of wires in this heating element. One is much thinner than the other one and melts at much lower current. We could make two different fuses out of them. Oh well, I'm left with around 15 ohms of the thicker wire. Now I just need something to wrap it around. Not again. Why don't we just wrap it around its own heat resistance core? Here you go, an almost 15 ohms 300 watts resistor. Let's connect it in series with another hairdryer. Don't try this at home. Here you go, let's switch it on. Oh, it's heating up already. I guess I can cool it down with the hairdryer. How much current is it drawing? Oh, stop it. See if I connect the line directly to the hairdryer. It runs fast, but through the resistor, it runs much slower because the resistor limits the current. And I bet if I connect it halfway, it runs faster too. Which brings us back to our potentiometer or variable resistor. I'm gonna use my trusty spoon as the potentiometer slider and tune the speed of my hair dryer. How much current is it drying? The whole thing is oh, fused. It must be over 10 amps. I bet if we blew air over our resistor to cool it down, we could even run it at higher currents. 
uh, I guess we already have our high power resistor with a fan set up here. Let's check its resistance. What? 2 mega ohms? Well, it's on, but on the lowest setting, it must be going through the elements that goes through the diode and motor and doesn't show right. Next setting, 20 ohms. Next one, 10 ohms on 120 volts is like 1440 watts. That's a ton. Man, just use a hairdryer as your power resistor. It has multiple resistor settings, a cooling fan, and all the safety features already set up. While you can use it to dry your hair if there was any, or instead, if you want to learn by making projects, then go to my sponsor Kiriko. Great project assortment with nine different lines covering all ages for kids from zero to 100 years old. These are hands-on steam projects designed by experts and tested by kids who can enjoy building them with the great instructions provided and the additional knowledge and science behind it. This looks a bit too technical. You think you can make it? Of course, I can build anything. Ha! <laughs> That's my daughter. Visit kiwico.com slash electroboom to get your first crate. Any crate at 50% off. My daughter has been building a few crates now and not only she gets hands-on building experience and learns a ton, but also the end products have been quite fun and useful too. Does it work? It works like a charm. Well, let me give you a stronger light. Look at it. It's a light seeking turtle. It's a moth turtle. <laughs> High five. Yeah. So do your kids a favor. Sign up using my link and fill up their summer with awesome KiwiCo projects they can learn a ton from while having fun, gaining the creative confidence they need. And thank you for watching.